Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Sharvan and you are watching In AS by Sharvan. So in this video, we will discuss about the revenue recognition. So we will discuss about the difference between the existing accounting standard 9 and now the end AS 18. So the revenue recognition accounting standard is very really important. And I know that everybody little bit knows about the recognition criteria and then the measurement and the disclosure. Uh, regarding the accounting standard 9 revenue recognition but there is a lot of difference in the NDS uh, 18 and the existing accounting standard number 9 so what I'm going to tell you in this video is I will tell you the difference from this book which is like the Indian accounting standard overview which is issued by the Institute of Chartered Accountant of India the link of the PDF file of this book is given in the description so you can check it out and you can check out the difference so i'm going to tell you the difference from this book and then compare uh, the existing accounting standard 9 and then the end as 18 so i'm going to tell you like the difference is there in this book and what exactly are the content or paragraph number which is uh, deal with that difference so all right guys so without wasting your time we shall start our topic so now let's start the session all right guys so now we have the three document uh, number one is the overview like indian accounting standard and overview revised 2016 which is issued by the institute of chartered accountant of india it's a good book uh, where you can find all the difference between the existing accounting standard and now the india's second document we have the existing accounting standard number nine and then we have in as number 18 so it's the india's so I will going to tell you the difference from this book which is the Indian accounting standard and overview and uh, I will going to tell you the difference from this book and also I will show you what exactly are the difference in both two standard all right guys so now first difference in this book is like this the definition of revenue given in India's 18 is broad compared to uh, the definition of revenue given in existing accounting standard 9 because it covers all economic benefit that arise in the ordinary course of activity of an entity which result in increase in equity other than increase related to contribution from the equity participant. On the other hand, as per the accounting uh, standard 9, existing accounting standard 9, revenue is the gross inflow of cash, receivable or other consideration arising in the course of the ordinary activity of an enterprise from the sale of goods from the rendering of services and from the use by others of enterprise resources yielding interest royalty and dividend so this is a difference like uh, in as18 definition of revenue is broad because it covers all the economic benefit while existing accounting standard 9 definition of revenue is narrow which cover only the gross inflow of cash so now let's take a look at what exactly the definition given in existing accounting standard 9 and the India's 18. So here's the definition of revenue in existing accounting standard 9 which says revenue is a gross inflow of cash receive, uh, receivable or other consideration arises in the ordinary course of activity of an enterprise from the sale of goods, rendering of service and from the use by others of enterprise resources yielding interest, royalty and dividend. So it just covered the gross inflow of cash and here is the definition given in the India S18 which it says like revenue is a gross inflow of economic benefit uh, here existing accounting standard 9 says only the gross inflow of cash it says gross inflow of economic benefit during the period arises in the course of the ordinary activity of an enterprise when those inflow result in when like in inflow of cash result in increase in equity other than increase uh, relating to contribution from the equity participant so like other than increase relating to contribution from equity participant means like increase in the number of shares or other stuff so other than that if there is a increase or inflow of economic benefit that result in the increase in equity then it is a revenue as per india's 18 but here only the gross inflow of cash receivable or other consideration is the revenue as per accounting standard 9. So this is the first difference like the definition under India's uh, 18 is wide, is broad compared to 
what was defined under existing accounting standard 9. All right guys, so now let's take a look at the second difference which is given into this book. So it says like measurement of revenue is briefly covered in the definition of revenue in existing accounting standard 9. So it's saying uh, the definition of revenue cover the measurement of revenue part also. While in AS 18 deals separately in detail with the measurement of revenue. We're saying in AS 18 has the separate component regarding the measurement of revenue, but under existing accounting standard 9, the measurement of revenue is covered into the definition of revenue. So let's take a look into the existing accounting standard number 9, how uh, the measurement of revenue is given into the definition. So this is the definition of revenue and the measurement portion is given like this. So like revenue is measured by the charges made to the customer or client for goods supplied and service rendered to them and by the charges and reward arising from the use of resources by them. So measurement of revenue is itself given into the definition of revenue under existing accounting standard 9. So like revenue is measured by the charges made to the customer or client for goods supplied and service rendered to them. But under existing or under in AS18, the measurement of revenue is a separate component and it says like revenue shall be measured at the fair value of the consideration received or receivable. So it's saying revenue should be measured at the fair value of the consideration received or receivable while existing accounting standard 9 says uh, revenue is measured by charges made to the customer or client. So fair value. So like paragraph number 10, 11 and 12 uh, deals uh, with this one like how to calculate the fair value. So like in these cases where it says like when the inflow of cash or cash, cash equivalent is deferred the fair value of the consideration may be less than the nominal amount of cash received or receivable. So where the customer is deferring the cash or like paying the cash into different installment then the fair value of the consideration will be less than the nominal amount of cash received or receivable. So here's the example like uh, in case uh, like in case when an entity may provide interest free credit to the buyers or accept a note receivable bearing a lower market interest rate from the buyer as a consideration for the sale of good. So in these cases the consideration uh, like the consideration will be like discounting the future cash flow by the prevailing rate of similar instrument and the difference between the fair value and the nominal amount of consideration is recognized as interest revenue in accordance with paragraph 29 and 30 of India's yeah, uh, here it says like India 39, but it is in actual it is India 109 financial instrument. So here is the component like how to measure the revenue, uh, like what is the fair value. So paragraph 10, 11 and 12 deals with how to calculate or how to measure revenue by using the fair value method. But under existing accounting standard 9, just a small portion is itself given into the definition like revenue is measured by charges made to customer. So here's the big difference between IND AS 9, IND AS 18 and existing accounting standard number 9. Now let's come to the third point or third difference which is says like IND AS 18 especially deal with the exchange of goods and service with the goods and service of similar and dissimilar nature. In this regard specific guidance is given regarding barter transaction involving advertisement service. This aspect is not deal with the existing accounting standard 9. So it's saying like in AS18 especially deals with the exchange of goods and service of similar and dissimilar nature and in this regard a specific guidance is also given into in AS number uh, 18 while this aspect is missing under existing accounting standard 9. So now we should look at uh, what exactly is the uh, application for regarding the exchange of goods. So paragraph number 12 like measurement of revenue uh, we discussed in the previous difference. So under paragraph number 12 of measurement of revenue it says like when goods or service are exchanged or swapped or goods or service which are of nature which are of similar nature and value the transaction or exchange is not regarded as transaction 
which generates revenue so when there is an exchange of similar nature of goods or service then it will not be uh, it will not be regarded as a transaction which generate the revenue so uh, this is often the case uh, with commodity like oil or milk where supplier exchange or swap commodity in various location to fulfill demand on a timely basis in a particular situation location so when goods are sold or service are rendered in exchange for dissimilar goods of service the exchange is regarded as a transaction which generate revenue so in case of a similar nature of um, swap it will not be uh, generate it will not be regarded as revenue but in case exchange of dissimilar goods or service then it will be regarded as transaction which generate revenue the revenue is measured at the fair value of the goods or service received adjusted by the amount of any cash or cash equivalent transferred so in this case the amount of revenue is measured like fair value of goods or service which is received and if there is any component of cash or cash equivalent in that uh, swap or exchange then you have to add it into the fair value of goods or service received and regarding the application which is given into this one so like appendix a uh, revenue barter transaction involving advertising service there is also a case study like this is given into uh, in AS18 while this component or this type of a thing is missing under existing accounting standard number 9. So this is a third difference uh, which is really important in case of a in AS18 and existing accounting standard 9. Alright guys so now here is the fourth difference which is says like in AS18 provide guidance on application of revenue criteria to the separately identifiable component of a single transaction in order to reflect the substance of the transaction while existing accounting standard 9 does not especially deal with the same so it's saying like recognition criteria uh, which is under the end as 18 so it says like in as 18 provide guidance on application of uh, recognition criteria to a separately identifiable component of a single transaction so you have the single transaction but in that single transaction you have the identif identifiable component which is separate like single transaction and in that single transaction you have separate identifiable component now how to apply the recognition criteria into that separate identifiable component so in as18 also give you the guidance in this regard so now let's take a look at what exactly are the paragraph in which that guidance is provided paragraph number 13 says you the recognition criteria in this standard are usually applied separately to each transaction so normally or usually the recognition principle recognition criteria like this uh, recognition criteria which is given under paragraph 14 so usually you applied the recognition criteria separately for each single transaction however in certain circumstances it is necessary to apply the recognition criteria to the separately identifiable component of a single transaction in order to reflect the substance of the transaction so how example is saying like while the sell selling price of a product includes an identifiable amount for the subsequent servicing that amount is deferred and recognized as a revenue over the period during which the service is performed so here's the example like uh, when the selling price of any product is also include separately identifiable amount of subsequent servicing like you are selling the air conditioning and then in that also include the servicing contract also so that amount like servicing component should be deferred and recognized as revenue over the period during which such uh, during which the service is performed so like uh, contract is for one year so you should defer that revenue over the period of subsequent servicing so that's how uh, this difference is like uh, it like give the uh, guidance on the recognition criteria to the separately identifiable component of a single transaction in order to reflect the substance of the transaction while existing accounting standard 9 does not especially deal with the same all right so now uh, next difference is fifth difference which is said existing accounting standard 9 require 
the recognition of revenue from interest on time proportion basis. So we all know accounting standard 9 says that revenue in case of interest should be recognized on the time proportion basis while exist, uh, like in AS18 required interest to be recognized using effective interest rate method as set out in int AS109 financial instrument. So this is the existing accounting standard number 9 and it says like interest should be recognized on a time proportion basis taking into account the amount outstanding and the rate applicable. But uh, in AS 18 says you to recognize the revenue in case of interest like this interest shall be recognized using the effective interest method as set out in India's instead of 39 it is 109 so if you want to check like what is effective interest rate method under in AS 109 then you can watch my other video related to in AS 109 which I where I cover in detail uh, what exactly the in effective interest rate method. Alright, so now uh, next difference is like in the S18 especially provide guidance regarding revenue recognition in case the entity is under an obligation to provide free or discounted goods or service or award credit to its customer due to any customer loyalty program while existing accounting standard 9 does not deal with this aspect. So here's the accounting standard number 18 in the in the AS 18. So like this appendix number B give you the application guide regarding the customer loyalty program. You can check it out. But uh, that guidance was not provided under existing accounting standard 9. And the next difference is like existing accounting standard 9 especially deal with the disclosure of excise duty as a deduction from the revenue from sale transaction while India 18 does not especially deal with the same. So under existing accounting standard uh, 9, uh, it says you like revenue, you should disclose the revenue like this, turnover, less excise duty and then net turnover. But this thing like disclosure of uh, lessing the excise duty from the gross turnover is not mentioned under India 18. So here's also a difference. And then another difference which is between IND AS18 uh, AS and existing accounting standard number 9 is that uh, disclosure requirement given in IND AS18 are more detailed as compared to existing accounting standard 9. So disclosure requirement like this under existing accounting standard 9 says in addition to the disclosure required by uh, accounting standard 1 an entity shall also disclose the circumstances in which the revenue has been postponed pending the resolution of significant uncertainty under in AS 18 the disclosure requirement is uh, relatively large so it also says you a lot of disclosure like entity shall disclose the accounting policy adopted for the recognition of revenue including the method adopted to determine the stage of completion of transaction involving the rendering of service then clause B also says you something clause number C also says you to uh, disclose the amount of revenue arising from the exchange of goods or service included in each significant category of revenue then paragraph number 36 also says you to disclose something so para uh, direct disclosure in IND AS 18 is large as compared to accounting standard 9 so this is the difference like uh, 8 differences there into existing accounting standard number 9 and uh, in AS 18. So if you like the video then please subscribe the channel and keep watching the content of this video. In the future we will do one thing like uh, I will going to tell you the balance sheet and uh, I'm gonna tell you the disclosure requirement of each single accounting or in AS so so that you can get the idea how the company is in actual disclosing those disclosure requirement into their practical life so we will also do it for this you have to keep yourself uh, updated regarding this channel keep watching the content subscribe the channel and turn on that uh, notification button so that whenever i will upload any video you can get the idea uh, what exactly is the video all right guys so now we will meet again in the next video till then bye bye